This lecture will examine the European region through its environment and physical geography, population and settlement patterns, cultural diversity and cohesion, geopolitical framework, and economic and social development. More specifically, 1. Describe in general terms the top topography, climate, and hydrology of Europe. 2. Identify the major environmental issues in Europe as well as the pathways taken to resolve these problems. 3. Provide examples of countries with different rates of natural growth. 4. Describe the patterns of internal migration within Europe, as well as the geography of foreign migration to the region. 5. Describe the major languages and religions of Europe. 6. Summarize how the map of European states have changed in the last 100 years. 7. Explain how Europe was divided during the Cold War and how it has changed since the Cold War's end in 1990. 8. Describe Europe's economic and political integration as driven by the EU. And finally, identify the major characteristics of Europe's current economic and social crisis. Europe is the most diverse region in the world. It's relatively small in area, smaller than North America and densely settled, with more than half a billion people. Take a look at the map. As you can see, the size of Europe fits in size inside that of North America. Also note the relative northerly position of Europe with that of North America. Much of Europe lies at the same latitude as Canada. Even the warm Mediterranean lands are farther north than that of the United States Mexican border. There are 42 countries from large states such as Germany, Spain, and France to microstates such as Andorra and Monaco. It is quite diverse in that each country has its own culture and language and is bounded together by its shared history. The concept of nation-state was developed here due to the many diverse countries with their homogeneous populations. It also had its share of troubles as well. Two recent world wars were fought in this region and due to its relationship with the United States, the Cold War involving the former Soviet Union has divided the continent between East and West. But don't be fooled by its size or past difficulties. The region carries a powerful punch in both world politics and the global economy. The physical environment is just as diverse as its culture. The region spans from the Arctic tundra of northern Scandinavian countries to the semi-arid hillsides of the Mediterranean islands. There are four factors that explain this environmental diversity. One, it has some of the oldest and newest landscapes in the world. Two, its latitudinal extent affects climate, vegetation, and hydrology. Three, even though it has high latitudinal areas, those areas are moderated by the Gulf Stream of the Atlantic Ocean and well, as well as the Baltic, Mediterranean, and Black Seas. And four, the long history of human settlement has transformed its landscapes in diverse ways. Looking at the map on the right, you may notice four distinct landform regions. One, Lowlands and the northern coast of the main ma landmass known as North European Plain, which has high population densities, intensive agriculture, large cities, and major industrial regions. This large lowland extends from southwestern France to the plains of northern Germany and into Poland. Two, the Alpine mountain system, which forms the topographic spine of Europe and consists of a series of mountains running west to east beginning with the Pyrenees Mountains bordering Spain and France, through the Alps bordering France, Switzerland, Austria, and Italy, to the Carpathians in Slovakia and Romania in the east, and the Balkans in the southeast. Other mountain ranges include the Apennines and the Dinaric Alps. 3. The Central Uplands is the area between the Alps and the European Lowlands in France and Germany. The mountains in this area are much lower than those found in the Alpine system. The uplands are important due to their raw materials of iron and coal for Europe's industrial areas. And fourth, the western highlands is on the western edge of the region extending from Portugal in the south through portions of the British Isles in the northwest to the highland backbone of Norway, Sweden, and Finland in the far north. The photo on the left depicts the majestic fords in Norway as part of the western highlands. Millions of years ago, continental ice sheets and glaciers carved deep U-shaped valleys along what is now Norway's coastline. As the ice sheets melted and sea level rose, the, these valleys were flooded by Atlantic waters, creating spectacular fords. 
Many forward settlements are accessible by boat, only by boat, linked to the outside world by Norway's extensive ferry system. The photo on the right depicts the very fertile European lowlands in the Normandy region of western France. Numerous rivers drain interior Europe by crossing this region, giving rise to large port cities along the coastline. The small island in the upper portion of the photo is Mont Saint Michel, a historic fortified monastery. The three principal climates dominate this region. Along the Atlantic coast is a moderate and moist maritime climate, modified by oceanic influences. Further inland you will find continental climates with hotter summers and colder winters, and to the south is a dry summer Mediterranean climate. Most of this region is either touching water or countries inland have access to water through its extensive network of navigable rivers and canals. There are four major seas and the Atlantic Ocean that form a ring around most of this region. This partial ring is formed by the Baltic and North Seas situated in the north, the Atlantic Ocean to the west, and the Mediterranean, Adriatic, and Black Seas to the south. This region also contains a navigable system of rivers and canals that allow access from any any outer body of water to connect, to connect to one another through land with major ports found at the mouths of most western rivers. In 1992 the Danube River, Europe's longest, was connected by canal to the Rhine River allowing commercial barge traffic to move throughout Europe and between the North and Black Seas. Because inland water traffic is reportedly 80 percent cheaper than trucking and because industrialization is increasing in Eastern Europe barge traffic has grown considerably in the last decade. In response, several countries along the Danube are formulating plans to protect the Danube environment from increased IWT development. Here a tug pushes a barge on the Danube in Serbia. Because of its long history of agriculture, resource extraction, industrial manufacturing, and urbanization, Europe has had its share of environmental issues. Many of the problems, such as air and water pollution, affect more than one country. For example, England creates serious acid rain problems in Sweden, and water pollution from Swiss factories on the upper Rhine River creates a major problem for the Netherlands, who use the water for their urban drinking supplies. However, Europe is probably the greenest of all major world regions today due to European Union's effort to address these issues. Although Western Europe has worked energetically over the past 50 years to solve environmental problems, Eastern Europe lags behind because environmental protection was not a high priority during the post-war communist period. Current efforts, however, show great promise. Climate change has already affected this region with melting glaciers, sparse snow cover in Arctic Scandinavia, and frequent droughts in the Mediterranean. Furthermore, the projecting sea ice rise will have serious impact on Europe's low-lying region, especially in the Netherlands. Conceived more than half a century ago, the Dutch Delta Works was originally built to keep ocean storm surges and Rhine River flooding from southwestern Netherlands. But now, given the forecast for sea level rise from global warming, the Delta Works must be re-engineered and made higher to protect the 50% of the Netherlands that lies either below or within just 3.3 feet of the current sea level. In response to global warming, Europe entered the 1997 Kyoto Protocol negotiations to enforce the regional action was superior to that of individual countries and devised an energy trading scheme to reduce greenhouse gas emissions for the region as a whole. Under this plan, the more industrialized countries would reduce their emissions, while allowing the poorer, less developed countries to increase theirs as long as they collectively never went above the target amount for the entire region. If any country were to exceed the limits, they would either produce carbon emissions equivalents from a factory or power plant below its own cap or alternatively buy credits from the EU carbon market. The idea was to make it most to make it cost monetarily as punishment and rewarding those who stayed under their quotas. It's no surprise that the countries with the largest populations produce most of the emissions outputs, as depicted in the table. Germany, the largest European country by population with eighty two million people, emits about eight hundred million metric tons of pollutants each year. From the table, you can see some of the anomalies. Take a look at Norway. They use hydroelectric power more than any other type of by a wide margin. 
In France, they use a majority from nuclear power to generate their electricity. However, not only is Europe trying to reduce its carbon dioxide emissions, but also it's a world leader in generating renewable energy from wind, sun, and biofuels. The large wind farm is in Denmark. Video question number one. Please pause the video and answer the following. What physical feature makes countries in this region extremely accessible to one another? List three specific examples. In your own words, use the text as a guide. Be thorough and specific with your answer. The major themes of Europe's population and settlement geography are its very low rates of natural growth, the complicated and often problematic patterns of internal and international migration, and a very high level of urbanization, particularly in the traditional industrial core area of Western Europe. As you can see from the map, the densely settled core areas include England, northern France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, and northern Italy. Notice on this map the area less densely populated or in the northern climates of Scandinavia and the more rural areas of Spain. Some of the more unique population characteristics of this region are the low or no growth rates, all well below the replacement rate of 2.1, which can be considered an economic and social liability. Low growth and no growth can also put a strain on countries with issues such as future labor shortages, smaller internal markets, and declining tax revenues, which are needed to support social service for the aging populations. However, to address these issues, programs and policies have been developed to promote population growth, such as bans on abortion and sale of contraceptives. Full paid maternity and paternity leave for both parents guarantees a continued employment once the leave is concluded, extensive child care facilities for working parents, outright cash subsidies for having children, free or low cost education and job training. Part of European Union's plan was to work towards a freer movement of both people and goods within its borders. This was accomplished with the Schengen Agreement named after the city in Luxembourg where it was signed in 1985. Before the agreement, Europeans had to show passports and other papers to cross between countries. Today, there are no border stations between countries that sign the agreement. In the photo, people stroll unhindered by document checks across the Poland-Germany border in the city of Gorlitz. Prior to Poland joining the, the Schengen Agreement in 2007, this border was heavily policed and document checks were rigorously enforced. Many move around European countries for economic reasons or to find refuge from internal conflicts, mainly from Eastern European countries. In addition, the routes and entry points for illegal immigrants change frequently as countries such as Greece, Italy, and Spain increasingly police their borders. The porous border between Greece and Turkey, for example, has long been a favorite illegal entry point for migrants from Central Asia, but have been hardened recently with hard, high fences watchtowers, and 24-hour guards. The map shows the, migrant into, the migrants into Europe from outside the region. Notice the flow from former colonies. Many of these migrants came to fill labor shortages during post-war rebuilding and recovery. However, with high unemployment and economic stress currently widespread in Europe, the region is no longer needed to import workers internationally. Therefore, tighter controls have been used to inhibit illegal immigration. Today, some observers describe Europe as being divided into a geopolitical system where its parameters consist of hard borders, a fortress Europe, as critics, critics call the plan, while its internal borders are deliberately soft and porous in the spirit of the Schengen Agreement. Much of Europe is urban and has a very unique combination of historic and modern elements in its cities. Three historical periods dominate most European city landscapes. The medieval period from 900 to 1500, the Renaissance Baroque period from 1500 to 1800, and industrial period from 1800 to present. Each phases had their own char characteristic traces on the urban scene today. The medieval landscape is one of narrow winding streets crowded with three to four masonry building three to four story masonry buildings with little setback from the street. This was a very dense landscape. In contrast, the areas built during the Renaissance Baroque period 
were much more open and spacious, with expansive ceremonial buildings and squares, monuments, ornamental gardens, and wide boulevards lined with palatial residences. This was a very artistic landscape. Finally, industrialization dramatically changed the landscape with factories clustered together, large markets, and worker tenements. These industrial districts were often located outside the former city walls, removed from the historic central city. These industrial districts were often linked with the historic district by rail. This aerial view of Grosotto, Italy shows how the historic medieval city was encircled by the Renaissance Baroque fortifications built to protect the settlement. Today, parks and public buildings are located in place of the former walls and moats. Looking at the photo, you can clearly see the crowded buildings of the medieval period in the center. <coughs> Salzburg, Austria was one of Europe's first cities to enact legal protection of its historic urban landscape with a 1967 law. Since then, many European cities have built upon the Salzburg approach to protect their own historic cityscapes. The view of Salzburg shows medieval dwellings and shops in the foreground and the medieval fortress on the hill, both bracketing the 17th century Renaissance Baroque Cathedral. Video question 2. Please pause the video and answer the following. What three urban landscape patterns have emerged in the European city? List and describe each one. In your own words, using the text as a guide, be thorough and specific with your answer. Europe has a rich cultural geography that encompasses a highly varied mosaic of languages, customs, religions, ways of life, and landscapes. In addition, European cultures have played leading roles in globalization as European colonialism brought about changes in many aspects around the globe. Finally, new waves of global culture are spreading into Europe as well. The photo depicts a McDonald's restaurant in Belgrade, Serbia's historic central city, which occupies a classic building. 90% of Europeans speak an Indo-European language. These languages can be grouped into the major categories of Germanic, Romance, and Slavic languages as shown in the map. 90 million Europeans speak German as a first language, which places it ahead of 60 million who list English as their native language. However, given the large number of Europeans who speak fluent English, as a second language, you could make the case that English is the dominant language of modern Europe. Slavic, on the other hand, is the largest European subfamily of the Indo-European language. Slavic languages extend from Poland in the north down to Bulgaria in the south. In this eastern region, the use of two alphabets are common, the Latin alphabet and the Cyrillic alphabet as depicted on the sign in the photo on the left. A directional sign in downtown Sofia, Bulgaria, uses both the acrylic and Roman alphabets to guide locals and visitors alike. This map shows the divide in Western Europe between the Protestant North and the Roman Catholic South. Historically, the distinction was much more important than it is today. Note the location of the former Jewish Pale, which was devastated by the Nazis during World War II. Today, ethnic tensions with religious overtones are found primarily in the Balkans, where adherents of Roman Catholicism, Eastern Orthodoxy, and Islam are found in pro pro close proximity to one another. Religion is an important component of the cultural geography of Europe because many of today's ethnic tensions result from historical religious events in which few splits occurred. One was between Christianity and the Orthodox sects in Greece, Bulgaria, and Russia. The other was between Catholicism and Protestantism in Western Europe. The other issue was the struggle with Islam's empires to the south and east. At one point, the Muslim Ottoman Empire ruled the southeast area, which is why Islam can be found there. After the exile from Palestine during the Roman Empire, the Jewish population shuffled around Europe in hopes of finding a true homeland and eventually settling in the northeastern section of the region, which has become known as the Jewish Pale. At that time, about 90% of the Jews lived in that area, and Nazi Germany used the this ethnic cl clustering to its advantage. Even Berlin had a large and thriving Jewish population, as attested to by the synagogue built in 1866, as depicted in the photo on the right. Prior to the Holocaust, 9.5 million Jews lived in Europe. 
During the Holocaust, 6 million were murdered and less than 2 million live in Europe today. Most live in the United States and Israel. This synagogue was used by the Nazis to store military clothing until it was heavily damaged by Allied bombing. It was restored and opened again in 1995 as a synagogue and museum. Today there is a mix of Christianity, Islam, and Judaism in this region. The photo on the left depicts Muslim men in a Berlin mosque. After France, Europe's second largest Muslim population is in Germany, a product of either guest worker policies that brought many Turks to the country and more recently Germany's liberal asylum policies towards refugees from civil conflicts around the world. A large Afghani population, for example, lives in Hamburg. Europe seems to be facing some of the same cultural issues as the United States. Migration patterns are influencing the cultural mix in Europe. Immigrant clustering leading to the formation of distinctly ethnic neighborhoods and even ghettos is now common in the cities and towns of Western Europe. Cultural battles have emerged as a result of this high influx of foreigners. For example, France has a large Muslim migrant population and to speed the process of assimilation into the French culture have banned the wearing of the conservative headscarf called hijab. The rule triggered riots, demonstrations, and counter-demonstrations, thusly creating far-right nationalist parties with disguised platforms to exclude migrants from their country. Soccer is the number one sport in Europe, which Europeans call football and can be considered the world sport of choice. However, they have taken a liking to American sports such as base basketball and baseball. American football, however, still remains a novelty in most of Europe and they find it boring. Soccer provides a fast-paced game continuously filled with excitement. Despite the visibility of female political leaders and the fact that Europe is considered one of the most developed regions of the world, gender equity issues persist in government, business, and domestic life. The employment of women in Europe's workforce, dif workforce differs significantly between different countries and regions. Scandinavia, for example, has the highest percentage of women in upper management positions, in contrast with the Mediterranean countries. The photo was taken at a business meeting in Berlin, Germany. Video question number three. Please pause the video and answer the following. After comparing the language and religion maps, also found in your text, list those areas where language, families, and religion appear to be related. In your own words, using the text as a guide, be thorough and specific in your answer. There was a lot of geopolitical turmoil in Europe in the 20th century, and it was mainly a divide between East and West, therefore the map of Europe has been redrawn several times. The series of maps show the eastern portion of Europe over the last 100 years. In 1914, three great empires existed, German, Russian, and Austro-Hungarian, as shown in the upper left map. They dominated the area prior to World War I. Following World War I, these empires were largely replaced by a mosaic of nation-states as shown in the upper right map. As you can see, many of the Eastern European countries were established as we experience today. However, many were not happy with the resulting map, claiming that their citizens were left outside the new borders. This created an epidemic of irredentism, or in other words, state policies for reclaiming lost territory and peoples. Therefore, more border changes occurred during World War II, as shown in the lower left map as a result of the Soviet Union's turning that area into a buffer zone between itself and Western Europe. As you can see, Germany was split between East and West. Poland took shape and Northeastern countries melded into the Soviet Union. With the demise of the Soviet Union in 1990, further political changes took place not only with the Soviet Union, but also with the Czechoslovakia and Yugoslavia, and the map was redrawn once again as shown in 2014 map, bottom right. Although the major geopolitical issue of the 21st, early 21st century remains the integration of Eastern and Western Europe into the EU, numerous issues of micro and ethnic nationalism also engender geopolitical fragmentation. In parts of Europe, such as Spain, France, and Great Britain, questions of local ethnic autonomy challenge central governments. For example, the Basque in northern Spain would like, to like a complete autonomy from Spain, Scotland from the United Kingdom, and Corsica from France. 
the seeds of the cold war were planted at the yalta conference of february 1945 when the leaders of britain the soviet union and the united states met to plan the shape of post-war europe therefore from 1945 to its demise in 1990 europe was divided into two geopolitical and economic blocks east and west separated by the infamous iron curtain which was built shortly after the peace agreement ending World War II. The Iron Curtain, a section in Germany of which is shown in the photo, physically separated the Soviet Union satellite countries of Eastern Europe with Western Europe. Besides the Iron Curtain itself, the border zone on the eastern side was commonly referred, commonly several miles wide and included military fortifications with several restrictions on civilian movements. The buffer zone consisted of an extensive block of satellite countries, dominated politically and economically by a Soviet Union that could cushion the Soviet heartland against possible attack from Western Europe. The symbolic end of the Cold War in Europe came on November 9, 1989, when East and West Berliners joined forces to rip apart the Berlin Wall, as shown in photo A. With jackhammers and hand tools, and by October 1990, Germany was officially reunified into a single nation-state. The wall made of concrete and barbed wire was built in 1961 along the border of East Berlin to stem the flow of refugees fleeing communistic rule. The wall was the most visible symbol of the Cold War division of East and West. In photo B, Berliners celebrate the end of the wall with East German police who previously guarded the border zone with shoot-to-kill orders. The other highly contested area in Eastern Europe was in the Balkans and specifically Yugoslavia. The Balkans have long been a troubled area with their complex mixture of languages, religions, and ethnic allegiances. This diversity led to the geopolitical fragmentation and breakup of Yugoslavia as depicted in the map. Not only is the area a meeting ground for Roman Catholicism, Eastern Orthodoxy, and Islam, but also complex linguistic boundaries complicate ethnic and national identity. Further, a long history of discrimination and retaliation between ethnic groups is embedded in ethnic consciousness. Question, video question 4. Please pause the video and answer the following. What are the main reasons why the European map has been redrawn in the last 100 years and why, has it, why, is, and why it has a, the strong potential for being redrawn in the future? In your own words, using the text as a guide, be thorough and specific in your answer. Generally, overall, the region does quite well with economic and social development. Once touted as the world's industrial leader in the early 20th century, its recovery and integration in the second half has been quite successful, especially in the western portion. On the other hand, Eastern Europe has fared less well because the results of four decades of Soviet economic planning were at best mixed. The total collapse of that system in 1990 cast Eastern Europe into a period of chaotic economic, political, and social transition that has produced a highly differentiated pattern of rich and poor regions. There are no questions to answer here, but please pause the video and look at Norway's GNI and Human Development Index versus that of Albania. But on the other hand, look at Albania's GDP growth versus that of Norway. Also, there has been a lot of improvement in under age 5 mortality rates from 1990 to 2011 in many countries around the region. It's no wonder that Europe was the world's industrial leader prior to the 20th century of any other region. It is where the Industrial Revolution began. Two significant events occurred that catapulted this, catapulted, catapulted this region and then the the world into the industrial age. One, machines began to replace human labor in many manufacturing processes. And two, inanimate energy sources such as water, steam, electricity, and petroleum powered these new machines. Europe's industrial revolution began on the flanks of England's Pennine Mountains, where swift running streams were used to power mechanized looms to weave cotton and wool. Later, once the railroads were developed, Many of these early factories shown in the photo switched to coal power. The map depicts the industrial regions of Europe. From England, the Industrial Revolution spread to continental Europe, starting with the Sambre Meuse region on the French Belgian border and then diffusing to the rural area in Germany. Readily accessible surface coal deposits powered these new industrial areas. 
early on iron ore or for steel manufacture came from local deposits but later it was imported from Sweden and other areas in the shield country of Scandinavia most of the newer industrial areas are closely linked to urban areas Today, Europe is attempting to set aside nationalistic differences and instead work towards regional, economic, political, and cultural integration through the European Union, or commonly referred to as EU. The European Union was founded in the 1950s with six, member solely, six members solely on rebuilding the region's coal and steel industries. Currently, 28 countries belong to the supranational organization with the purpose to facilitate greater cooperation among European countries. It has been achieved in many ways, yet it has also created controversy as the EU deliberately erodes the power of the individual member countries. In the photo, German protests the 2012 EU plan to bail out weak Mediterranean co economies with subsidies from fiscally stronger EU countries. The map shows the current members in purple and the date they entered the EU. The countries in green have applied for membership since 2013 and the countries in yellow have not applied. Note that Norway is not a member of the EU, primarily because membership would restrict that country's fishing industry. The same restrictions may also become problematic for Iceland's membership as well. Eastern Europe has historically been less developed economically than its western counterpart. This is due in part to the lack of natural resources and with what they did have were exploited by outside interests rather than being developed from within. Furthermore, the economy of Eastern Europe was under the Soviet centralized economic plan which served Soviet homeland interests more than the region. As the Soviet Union dissolved, many countries underwent difficult economic and social transitions trying to recover from the collapse. Some countries did well and others did not. In the photo, a customer buys fish at a new Care for hypermarket on the outskirts of Sofia, Bulgaria. Consumer items, including food, were historically in short supply in Eastern Europe during the post-war Soviet satellite period, with these shortages continuing through the difficult post-Soviet transition years. Today, however, there is no shortage as Western super and hypermarkets have populated Eastern Europe. But whether local customers can actually afford these Western goods remains unclear. Carefor, a French firm and the world's second largest retailer behind Walmart, is reportedly selling its Eastern European stores in order to expand retailing efforts in China. The map shows the economic differences in European countries based upon gross national income GNI, per capita adjusted for purchasing power parity PPP. Most striking are the economic disparities not only between Western and Eastern countries, but also between the richest, Norway and Luxembourg, and the poorest, Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Unemployment rates, which can change rapidly, were included as indicators of economic vitality in mid-2013. The euro dollar created in 1999 has brought both promise and problems for this region. Eleven countries at the time joined together and created European Monetary Union, or EMU for short, to integrate individual states' monetary systems to a common currency. Now 18 countries have completed, completely replaced traditional national currencies, creating what is commonly called the Eurozone. In theory, all remaining UU members are obligated to join the Eurozone at some point in the future. However, some EU countries have considerable reservations about giving up control over their national monetary system and therefore continue to use the traditional currency. Some of the major problems for Eurozone involves bailouts and fiscal austerity. Many countries with weak economies have overspent, creating huge indebtedness because they were able to get cheap credit under the EU EMU member status. Also before the EMU, it was common for governments to manage debts by adjusting their currency by inflation or deflation. However, this is no longer allowed under the EMU. Instead, they must seek help from one from more solvent EMU countries, which means receiving bailouts funded by Germany, France, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. Furthermore, the countries who sought bailouts had to adopt a policy of fiscal austerity resulting in massive reductions of government spending. However, this has led to stagnant economies and still higher unemployment in the affected countries. Greece suffered 
deeply because of the euro crisis and its population has protested vehemently against the fiscal policies resulting from its bailouts here in athens greece labor unions protest against these policies the term troika is originally a russian word used to describe the three-part leadership of the soviet era and is used here in an unflattering reference to the three organizations administering the bailout funds to greece the EU, the European Central Bank, and the International Monetary Fund, or IMP. Video question number five. Please pause the video and answer the following. The United States is said to be the industrialized leader in, the, in today's world. How then did Europe become the world's economic leader earlier than the United States? In your own words, using the text as a guide, be thorough and specific with your answer.